How many of you have, had, have heard 1 Corinthians 13 read at a wedding? Now, that's usually where we heard it read and where we hear sermons on it. And though the, spe- the minister may speak more eloquently than I'm about to, it usually centers around once we get into the toils of marriage, the day-to-day um, living, that we need to keep love at the center of it, right? Everything we do, we need to do in love. And that's true of any relationship. But um, marriage, you're, you know, you're worth that person day in and day out. And so you should keep love in your relationship and the things that you do to do in love and to not count the wrongdoings and not to count, you know, this this weight of, oh, I do this, well, I do that, right? So the minister usually speaks on something like that. I think that one thing that um, is usually left out of that sermon is that, you know, the congregation answers, Um, Will you support these people in their vows? And we all say, we will, right? Um, But sometimes we can help in the uh, counting of wrongdoings or the boasting of of what uh, our friend or our uh, child is doing. And in that, we also don't necessarily keep focused on love. And so that kind of applies to 1 Corinthians uh, actual context. When Paul wrote that letter, he was not writing it to people who were in the height of love with each other and um, about to get married. He wrote it to a church who was at odds with each other. Um, A couple weeks ago, I told you about Corinth. I'm going to give you a shorter version of that and tell you a little bit more about what's going on in the church and um, why Paul wrote this part in his letter. So if you'll remember, Corinth is across the gulf from Athens. It's probably where the Olympic Games were played. It's a Roman colony full of uh, veterans and freed people. And so there's not an established aristocracy. It's also, there's a um, temple to Asarte, who is the one of the goddesses of love and fertility. And um, so there, there are things going on with that that are immoral in in our view. And so some of those things have bled into the church. And so if you read chapters 5 through 10, you'll find out what is happening in the Corinthian church. One of the things that's happening is that after Paul leaves, Paul has usually trained someone up to follow behind him, or there's somebody coming to, to teach. And so there have been a few and the people are divided as to which uh, teacher they follow and which one was the best. Oh, Paul said it, you know, with the most heart. Yes, but Apollos had the most wisdom and and uh, spoke so eloquently. And, you, you know, so they are divided as to which minister was the best minister. And they're arguing about that. They're also maybe one-upping or not being as empathetic as they might need to be about meat that's been sacrificed to idols. So there are those who are like, yes, but it's just meat because the idols are nothing. God is our God and um, the God of everything. And so it's just meat. But there were people who either worshipped those idols at one point or thought that the meat was... uh, you know, powerful in its way to those idols. And, and so they were having trouble with, with the meat in um, <clears throat> the butcher shops and, and what to eat. And so you had people kind of bickering on that or like, no, don't worry about it. I, you know, I don't know why you're having problems with this. And so they weren't necessarily being empathetic uh, towards their fellow people. And also at that time, Eucharist was an actual meal. And so people were coming to the Eucharist, and they may have arrived earlier than others, and they started eating, and they started drinking, and they may have been well into their drink or well into eating when others arrived, and some people possibly weren't getting anything to eat or drink. Um, They possibly were leaving hungry. So they're not, you know, they're not approaching that meal as it's meant to be approached, nor um, with love towards their neighbor. And so... Paul is writing to kind of address all of these issues. You see him address 
um, in chapters 5 through 10. And then Paul talks about love. And, and we read it in chapter 12 two weeks ago, and then last week where Paul compares the body, let's see, the, the church to the actual body, you know, and I cannot say that I'm not needed because I'm not a hand. We can't all be eyes. We can't all be hands. And so Paul goes into to this chapter, what we kind of refer to as the love chapter, though after you read that, and then you read this, you might say it's the smackdown chapter, right? <laughs> He's setting everybody straight in uh, chapters 12 and 13. And so Paul says, you know, those things that you're doing, those good works that you're doing, they don't mean anything if you don't have love. If you don't do them with love, they are empty. Because what are our greatest commandments? To love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we're doing them just to boast, we're missing the point. And they're somewhat empty. Those acts and those, those prophecies and all of that. And Robert and I were talking about this, and I was like, I don't understand how you can have self-sacrifice and, and it not count, right? But the key is in what it says. If I hand over my body so that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. And so love is what we are supposed to be focused on. Love is what should be driving us, is what Paul is saying. And all of those things, he says later in the letter, all of those things pass away. It's love that never ends. The prophecies end the good works in, love continues. Love is what endures. And why is it that love endures? We often say that God is love. And so when we're doing these things, it's love that persists. It's love that never fails. And so he goes on to talk about what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. And I don't know about you, but there's something I've heard of where you put your name in there, right? You put your name in that and, and try, to, try to live up to that. Kendra does not assist on her own way. My family might have a different opinion of that, right? Um, Kendra is not irritable or resentful. Kendra does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. So I don't know about you, but if you put my name into all of that, I'm not sure that I always live up to those ideals. I'm not sure that um, those closest to me would say, um, I fulfill all of that all the time. I don't know about you, but, but for me, that's the case. And But what is true all the time is that if you put Jesus in there, if you put Christ in there, it's true all the time. It's true all the time. And if we put Christ at the center of our life in Christ, we can live up to those ideals a whole lot better. We can live up to that. If we put love at the center of what we're doing and in our relationships, we can live up to those ideals because Jesus lives up to those every time. Jesus lives up to those every time. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I don't, we're not supposed to just believe. That's not what it's saying, that, that we're naive or, or fools or anything like that. It's that we believe all of Jesus' promises, all of God's promises. We believe all of it. We hope in all of it. We find hope in all of it. And Jesus endured so many things for us. And in Jesus, we can endure all things. Love never ends. Because God never ends. God is love. God is eternal. Jesus is eternal. And in them, our hopes and our lives and our faith and our love endure forever. So all of the other things pass away, but love never ends. Love endures for all time and in all things. And so then... Um, Paul has Paul addresses uh, faith, hope, and love in other letters. So to the Thessalonians, when he had 
talks about faith, hope, and love. He focuses on hope because the Thessalonian church was uh, losing hope because the people who knew Jesus were dying and Jesus hadn't come back. And so Paul uses those triads in other letters, but he focuses on hope for the uh, Thessalonians because they needed hope, but he focuses on love for the Corinthians because they were lacking it in their relationships and in their church. And so I don't know which of those you need help focusing on, whether it's faith, whether it's hope, or it's love, but in those, Jesus can help you in, in that with love. Jesus can help you with your hope. Jesus can help you in your faith. If we turn to Jesus, those things endure, and those three, those three things abide. And so at the end, it says, we will be fully known even as, let's see, we will know fully as even as we are fully known. And so I don't know about you, but, you know, my child, and, and when I was a child, I thought that the bands were actually in the um, radio. You know, my parents would change the radio, and, um, and it, would, it would be the same song, and I would be like, how did they get over there already, you know? And my parents were completely confused as to what I was asking. And my children think, you know, that card is magic, right? It, you just put it somewhere, and you can get whatever you want. You can get money, you can get whatever. So as a child, there are things that we believe, but as we grow up, we know we know more fully, right? Well, with God, in the, when, we, when we go on, we will be known more fully. We will know more fully. You know, there are so many things that we think about heaven, and, and some of them kind of make me chuckle or, or roll my eyes. I apologize. Um, you know, people talk about, well, when I get up to heaven, I'm going to ask God, you know, da, 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 why did we do this? And we kind of think that it's going to be just like on earth, right? Except that we won't hurt and we, we you know, won't have to interact with people we don't like. And, you know, we kind of have this uh, utopian view of what, of what um, heaven is. And it's, it's not necessarily accurate. It's probably more like thinking that, you know, that magic card has, you can get whatever you want with it, right? Um, and so you can read stories about people who have either had near-death experiences or um, if you've interacted with people who are dying, um, where it's so peaceful, you know, and, and um, we just can't fathom what it's like, right? I, I heard somebody talking about if we could only paint a picture of what it seemed like our loved one was seeing, it would have been amazing. And think about some of those things in the Bible that we just don't understand, right? We, they're just beyond our comprehension. Ezekiel has plenty of them in Revelation, but just one of the more simple ones is, you know, with God there is no darkness at all. There's only light. That's not something that we can imagine. Even if we've been up in the North Pole when it's constant light, there, we just can't imagine that. There being no shadow, you know, there, there being so much light. And so that last part where, for we have seen in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, then I will know fully. We will know fully when we're in the presence of God. We will, we will know everything that we haven't understood. And we will be known. We are known. In the first reading, you know, God knew Jeremiah in the womb, even before. So some of us, that may be scary that, that we will be fully known, but God already fully knows us. God already fully knows us and thinks that we're beloved. And so when we, when we pass on or, or the new heaven and new earth, we will fully know everything that we haven't understood because we will be in the presence of God and we will know what it's like to be fully known and fully loved. So when you, when you hear this at, uh, you know, every third year in, in the church or, or at the weddings that you go to, remember that even if we can't live up to this love ideal, Jesus does. And in Jesus, we can come closer 
to that ideal. And we are already fully known. We are already fully known, and God calls us beloved. Amen.